Well, if you would like to make a small contribution to the running of my channel, then all you need to do, at the bottom of your screen, click on the thanks, you then slide the slider along to the amount, as little or as much as you wish, and click buy and send. You then fill in your details, and you're done. I thank you very much in advance. If you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then all you need to do is to click on the link at the bottom right hand corner, any stage during the painting, um, and click subscribe. You will just, it won't cost you anything, you've just uh, received notifications when I upload more videos. Well after my trip to Haybridge Basin the other day, very much inspired to paint um, a couple of scenes actually, um, but particularly this one um, of um, uh, of a lovely sort of, I don't know whether they call it a schooner or a boat, I'm not good with boats, but um, uh, a lovely boat that sat um, uh, waiting, I would presume, for the tide to go through the lock uh, out into the um, out into the river, and eventually the open sea, and um, <coughs> that's the the old ship, the uh, pub, right on the lock. Um, then we have uh, tip tree uh, tea rooms there, and um, boats in the background. <coughs> now I did a pencil sketch, as you could see, and uh, <coughs> um, I'm going to treat this some way somewhat different to what I've done before so let me just have a have a go and see if I can um, show you what I mean right now first thing I'm going to do I'm only using I'm using this uh, uh, pointed mop brush I'm damping the paper but I'm not going to damp right the way down this time um, purely because what my theory behind this one is that <clears throat> everything behind that boat is going to be quite cool and blue. Everything from the buildings forward will have colour and um, and definition. Uh, well, that's the theory. Um, oh, actually, I am going to um, come down a little bit further with that. That's it. Um, but of course, that's you know everyone. I think when they paint, they have an idea. Well, they should do an idea of where they're going. Right, I haven't actually damped up my paints and they're a little bit messy from uh, painting yesterday. Um, but hey-ho, um, let's just go with the flow, you know. Um, let's just splash colour on and see what we get. Um, so I've damped them all up. There we go. No idea what colour I'm going to use. But to start with, I've just made it a quick decision. And that is uh, Windsor Blue, Prussian Blue. And it's going to be quite deep at the top um, like that a couple of wispy sort of clouds perhaps like that there we are. then I'm going to introduce Indian red to that just to just to make it a little cooler and just a little splash of Indian here and there the way that breaks out into the damp paper. See the way you get that lovely glow. That's the thing I like about watercolour. You know, it's um, you get so much freedom. And and if you produce the colour, just trying to think where I am here. Right, okay. So that's the building. That's the boat. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to leave the boat and the area. Um, that's the background as well 
There we are. And everything in front of the boat, or the boat onwards, is going to be treated in a more defined manner. There we are. Good. Now I just want to show up a little bit of this lovely rich green colour that we've got. Ooh, don't go over the path. Just try and it's cadmium. Just picking it up straight out of the palette. One or two other bits and pieces going on there. One or two other colours in there. Um, but um, this is I don't know. This is sort of style I've developed just lately. Um, just picking up the colour. Uh, from the palette and um, just using a bit of blue in there just to blend in the paper with in into the paper really um, just as it goes like that there we are and um, that I think as the start is probably um, the first washers Now sometimes the longest part of a painting is the drying time really, um, but anyway, um, and that is now dry so I can now move on. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm now going to silhouette everything in the background and uh, well, shall we continue with this colour? Um, let's use alizarin for this now, um, don't know why, just to see whether um see what we get out of it really um okay and the thing is that the, the these buildings are uh, in color but um um i want to depict them uh, in in distance it's a dif distant feel so it's got to be sort of like cool and blue still a little on the wet side whether that will be an advantage or not will remains to be seen but anyway that's the um that building there and then that just just lose it behind that tree and then we go in with a stronger color now for the blue gray for this building here never painted like this before so it's um it's going to be um quite a learning curve i think for me um which um in fact that's the way art should be shouldn't it you know i think when you paint it's a learning curve for everyone really you know um whether you a professional artist or whether you've um cool, it's a bit heavy um whether you're a professional artist or whether you're just uh, an amateur um you know we're all learning all the time every time we pick up a brush something new springs to mind and you think shall we have a go at that one and that's what i've done here really I've just thought, shall I have a bash at painting this in a different manner? And um, quite often, um, you're never sure whether you've made the right decision until um, pretty much um, near the end, really. So you're in as good a place to to know is me because I've never really painted anything like this before see I've added more blue to that um, I want to keep a separation there because that building stands behind so in theory you'd feel that that had just a little bit more blue in it that's why I've painted that considerably bluer um, and then we get a bit more bit more red in the mix again for the there's a large chimney breast there uh, a couple of chimneys I'm not you know I'm not creating 
anything let's bring blend up with that uh, anything you know too detailed in fact it's it's just more or less silhouetted I suppose you could say uh, as a good description um, I say that finishes like that that comes down like that we must be ever a continuous color here right top of the roof of the of the there um, right, that's still building we've got some right, that's still the boat in the background so you should just then see a nice image of the boat itself and I think it's called Sweet Surrender now how it got that name I wouldn't like to um, to hazard a guess really but um, there must be a story behind it presumably um, whoop. not go too high with that oh well there you go that's worked out and the good thing about using these large mop brushes you can paint so much with just one loaded brush so you haven't got to keep um, changing uh, you know adding to picking out colour and you've not got any problems with the colours um, well they're again changing really right there we go and we've picked around the back of that and I think well right we'll go down the back of the boat there and that is the next stage of this painting now while that's just drying off I'm just going to add a tint of raw sienna uh, let's go to the Indian red again because I want a bit of a grey whoops too much there we go don't red there we go a bit of a stone grey really and that runs along there this is the path that um, runs around the uh, key like that and then it comes towards us and the old trick as it comes towards us we just add a bit more red so I'm picking up a bit more red off of the palette even a spot more red there whatever red you're using just just add a touch more to it as you come forward and get a bit more sort of rough with the there we go that's all we got to do a bit heavy but hey ho get rid of that there you go and that just gives a lovely bit of perspective in this foreground and that's what I love to see you know something leading the eye into the picture it's always a good thing to do and don't fiddle I'm fiddling shouldn't be doing that and that's the path now I've changed over to the rigger um, my number five pro art it's the series with the gold tip not too expensive and I'm going to use burnt sienna now and the burnt sienna is for the the wood the varnished wood parts of the boat in the foreground and um, I'm using the rigger because it's a little bit detailed so um, we may as well go with the rigger um, right where have we got these all oh, right okay don't overload the brush right we have a sweep of this colour down there it actually heads off up a bit higher than that but let's just sweep that down to there there is an opening there and then that sweeps back to there and that is the um, well we might as well put that in that is the ladders to get up into the boat and then it sweeps around the corner I like burnt sienna for this sort of um, 
this sort of work and um, then we have might as well use a rigger for the rest of it really gets a bit detailed that's the only reason I don't like using it but let's just see best, best, best to paint quick and then quite often you end up with um, a loose feel which is what I'm looking for really right that finishes there sweep that in and it sweeps across there's a cabin there remember this little trick of leaving that bead of white and I've just run into it it doesn't matter too much there just a little bit of bead of white before you around the rim of the boat see the way that picks that up and if you leave that bit of that bead of white just go down like that inside and up and that bead of white gives it shine it gives a definition between those two colors good where else do we go for that oh of course we've got the cabin at the back we do have windows there we do have a door so and a sloping roof there's the door there's the window the door will go in a little darker later I think it'll be nice to have that a little bit darker um, there you go see how that color comes forward and that gray sits back exactly um, what I've been planning to do is there any more well there is a oh yes there is just a, a rim there like that um, across the back now I'm going to leave the top the roof and the edge there unpainted maybe tinted later but I'd sooner leave it unpainted and allow that um, to um, to dry um, right I'm going to go back I don't want to be using the rigger too much right next I'm going to go in with one or two sort of colours well we've got um, <coughs> cobalt blue for two of the fenders one there nice bit of warmth uh, sorry a bit of cool color against the warmth one there and one there the other one's potentially white um, what else what other colors have we got oh we've got lovely blues in the sails I wonder that's still a little damp there um, anyway um, the blue will be ultramarine looks like an ultramarine blue to me and uh, the sails are flat at the bottom like that and a bit uneven at the top where they're wrapped around the boom and they just run up the um there we go this is exactly the sort of thing i was looking to do just trying to work out whether that's dry mm. anyway let's interfere with that blue because we do have there's lots of blue bits and pieces going on and um, we've got railings whoops and uh, that's it there's lots of blues within the gantry of the um, of the Of the lock gate and two little touches here and there nice to leave some little white pieces because I think they will benefit later on um, good let's just add a little bit of dark here because I'd like to show up there is a dark sort of box of some sort there not sure what that is but anyway and I want to show up the corner of that the shape of that boat the bow at the front mm -hmm. lovely 
Shall we go with the flow on this? Yeah, let's just take a chance that we've got good ultramarine again for this area here. That's the the boom that supports that has the um, sail wrapped around it. Right now. I'm going to leave, as I did with the other, just one or two little uneven touches of the tops where the light is catching the top of that. Um, and that is just, just hope it doesn't bleed in. You can see it's still a little on the damp side and it is just going a touch. But let's hope it's not too much because you don't really need too much of that. But that's good. That's fine. A little bit of softening, not... Uh, not a major problem. While all that is drying, I'm going to put in this um, dark tree. And that is just Windsor Blue, my normal mix. And just need a yellow. In actual fact, I don't know whether I'm going to use a yellow. I'm going to use Indian Red again. Because I want that to be um, quite dark against that sky. There we are. Quite open on the outside edges. Dense in the centre. Two gaps. That's it. Plenty of gaps. Using the pointer brush this time. Not often I do, but I don't know if you can hear that, but it's raining quite heavy outside. There we go. And now I'm adding a little yellow to that. Because now I've come down, you may see a bit of the yellow of the uh, greens. Go. It's hanging down nicely and it tucks back. Yes, coming down very heavy at the moment out there. It's a lovely day, quite a nice day when I was at uh, Haybridge Basin. It really is a, a lovely place to visit, to be quite honest with you. And uh, if you've never been, well worth a visit if you're in the uh, uh, southeast of England or eastern counties somewhere. Good, so that's the tree on the right hand side. Um, right, where are we going? Windows. Right, I'm going to use the same brush. And I'm going to use... Um, Ultramarine and let's use burnt sienna. Take off a little bit of moisture. I'll take off a bit of moisture on a bit of towel of some sort. Let's use the ultramarine. Pick up a bit of blue and um, oh, I've just got some ultramarine to put in there. Right, and what, what have we got? Well, we've got a door opening there, got a window there, a window there, we have a window there with a white surround, so I'm trying to keep sort of away from the surround if I can. And notice how I'm not putting it in too specific, I'm being quite, um, quite rough with the way that's treated. I've got a window there and another one just showing there there's also a little porthole there and one there so um they are all the windows we have on the boat i think and of course the door i'll bring that door down just a touch because we want to denote that it is a door and not another large window that's okay good that's that. Let's use the ultramarine again to um, to pick up the it's like a well I class as a banner really. It's um same colour as the sails. It's running around here. I don't think it's got any writing on. Some have the name of the boat. Um but this one didn't, I don't think never picked up on that anyway but and of course it goes around the corner as well a 
and now again I've tried to leave a little bead around the edge of the rim of that and then it's attached to the railings I think that one there we are that's the next stage Now I'm just going to show a little bit of 
detail on the building, not detail as such, but another layer of colour. Um, a bit, bit more red perhaps in the mix. Same two colours. Um, so, and uh, because the the roof on this building is slightly darker, I'm just going to give that another wash of colour. So this is the idea of uh, what I had in mind. So there we go. And also the windows as well. And I'm painting across the top down the right hand side of these because that just gives it oh and the door just line those windows up a touch but not get too specific with those see the way it's um uh, it's creating a, a different feel to the windows and uh, then we have another building there and it's actually given a sort of silhouette feel to these windows and uh, buildings and we've got to come down the back edge there I'm not going to touch the back but I'm going to put these, this darker colour into the chimneys because they belong to the front chimneys and this one here is going to have some darker colour but the ones at the back, those are going to be left unpainted. So we're getting a nice separation um, of the of the colours. Um, just a way of um, another way of treating um, this type of uh, painting. Really, we've even got a thunderstorm outside now, so that's interesting. Just when you lay these colours on, lay them on quickly. Don't loose. Don't un, don't affect the underpainting. Um, all right, we'll go down there, and of course it goes underneath like that. See, let's darken that up. Just in that area. Finish that there. Perhaps it doesn't go underneath. No, it doesn't. There you go. Uh, and we have a. Um, what do we have here? Oh, we have a wind. We, we have a roof up there, right? We have a window there. A window. Where have we got windows? Can I see on my? Oh yes. Yeah, we've got a window there. Got a window there. We've got a roof area there. That stands, and we've got some windows. I'm sure. Yep. So there's another window there. Window there, window there. Um, what else have we got? Don't do too much to the, that area there. Might be another window there. Other than that, we're going to leave that at that. Because I want that. See how that's silhouetted and that's, that glows. Oh, and there's another. Must put this window in. Uh, that's like a little conservatory area where you can eat. Um, and that is some... Um, Quite a nice uh, little area that. Uh, oh, of course, the roof is dark too. Here we are. And that is probably all I'm going to do with uh, with those. Good. One thing I've just forgotten to paint is that little area there. So let's pick up some of this dark sort of. Um, Indian red, winds of blue, that's the colour we're looking for because that then finishes off the that's the key uh, where the boat sits and that then shows you the bow of the boat complete. These are things you've got to look for when you're painting um, or when you're um, uh, sorting out your, your tone values. That's why I did the pencil sketch because I could see how the boat would stand out against a soft building work in the distance. Um, now all we've got to do is um, to get the rigger out and put in some uh, fine details. Um, good. Right. 
for this I'm going to use a cobalt blue bit of ultramarine there and burnt umber there we go that was a quick decision well I'll put some Indian red with that too because I want it to be warm there we go and this is for moss which I will get the uh, mule stick out for this um, right the lovely mask comes down the back here like this not too wide just be careful with that widens up as it hits the sail it's wrapped around and then of course you see it again at the base and that's where it's at its widest or wider than any of the other I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber in that as well, um, ultramarine in that as well, just to give it a much stronger feel. Don't want too much on the brush, otherwise you end up with a really thick, it's quite a thick, um, it's quite a, you know, thick um, mast, it's substantial, it's a substantial boat as you can see, so it does have a reasonable mass to it. There we are. That's it. Then that finishes there and then continues down the back directly underneath to meet onto the boat itself. And that finishes like that. Now we're beginning to see that the uh, the boat itself standing out in clear relief against the um, the background um, colours really. Right, I'm removing a little bit of moisture because I don't want these to, this part of the uh, rigging supports there. Um, one there I believe. Um, we do have just a little bit more height to those. Like that now this time I want to go very dark so I'm using the two strong colors but I want this to really stand out warm dark color not too much water because this is the area there and we have the railings where you go up onto the boat and then you get the smaller ones that come back and do they go all the way around the boat let's have a think yeah it must have got to I suppose and we'll just cross a few crosses across there see when you when I do these I'm not counting them I'm not looking to paint every single one in. Uh, I don't want it to get too um, too detailed, really. You know, it's um, in actual fact they are white, but you know, uh, I'm not going to use masking fluid. I'm not going to go into all that sort of uh, business. Um, now, while I have this colour, I am. I was going to use pencil, but let's try and use the brush to finish off the pylon like that that one goes through there that one goes down there and this one heads you don't need to show it all actually you can stop before you get um, oh and this one is goes right up there like that and it's got quite a quite a bit of thickness to it because I understand there is this one too the sails around that or the sail work and then we just have something coming back there like that another one to there oh it 
it's one to there, one to there, one to there. Just very, very suggestive. You see how I'm just suggesting that. Nothing too, um, not putting too many in. Don't want too many of these in. Good. Well, I'm pretty much happy with that. That seems to be working quite well. Good, good, good. Now it's just finishing touches, bit of shadow. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the, I just forgot to put the fender. Um, Um, ropes in like that and I would presume there is some sort of yeah there is um, some sort of supporting rope to something there so that's just make certain that that goes in um, other than that I'm going to take the mop brush again and now I'm going to start looking at shadows now the light would the glow of light is coming from behind these buildings obviously but it's picking up on the rest of the um, areas so I'm going to use Windsor Blue and Olizarin Crimson because I want to get that nice sort of a dark evening shadow really and I think this will give it to me don't want it too dark um, so we can go too dark with this the evening shadow is a little bit more subtle quite often there we go nice bit of blue grey right to start with I'm going to pick up One or two little, bit heavy, but one or two little sort of touches there, two little touches there, and one or two little bits of shadow there. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two little touches here and there. And a bit of shadow there, a bit of shadow on the front there. That's it. Good. Now I'm going to sweep across a bit of shadow from that, like that. Okay. Then we're going to have some shadow here from this tree. we are and that's going to sweep across like that and light up that bench look at that Isn't that lovely okay now where else do we get shadow well we will have shadow on the cabin there so we put that in shadow Um, the rear of that white area of the boat, the bow of the, the bow of the boat, that goes like that. So I just want to finish off the outer edge of that. Now, left hand side of that, left hand side of that and that, we have the rope coming down and we have a shadow onto there, onto there. When it dries you'll be able to see that. That's it. Um, good. See, we've got a lovely bit of light onto that now. And then we have just a little bit of edging on the shadow. A bit of shadow work here for the edge of the uh, rather rough edge of the path. Whoops, that's a bit heavy. Um, what are we going to do with that? Oh, let's just get rid of that. 
That's it. That's it. Oh well, there you go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's the thing. And then it comes around like that. And you just see some little touches, a little bit there, like that. Good. And uh, just a little bit of lining here. Probably should use a rigger for this, but there you go. Just hint at that little touches here and there. There we are. A bit heavy but no problem. Then my favourite, whoops wrong colour, my favourite is to just want to block out the back of that boat on the outside edge. Then we're looking for a very subtle shadow running across this foreground and it's going to go over the back of that boat like that across there and just it, all it does is to centre your eye towards the boat itself and then just soften it that's it because if it's soft then it could be shadow from anything really and I think we'd better allow that to oh, hang on <laughs> just one other um, let me just once the brush goes in the mouth I know I'm nearly there got to remember that we're going to get a little bit as that bow turns in at the front a little bit of soft shadow so damp it like that and then paint in with your shadow colour into that bit there not as dark as the background and just up to there we are now you can model that by taking off a lot most of the moisture on the brush and then drawing off the colour and that should give you a feeling that perhaps there's a bit of a turn there to that. Perfect. Yep, that is more or less what I would have thought when I first started. Um, just a bit of additional shadow that I need. And that's down that. And underneath where that uh, ladder is there we go uh, see how that sets that ladder back in um, just want to line up just quickly use a rigger for this just where that edge of that path is there we go and that now needs the surround taken away well there it is with the surround taken away and I've just got to sign it just put a couple of uh, well I've actually put five birds in but now I'm going to sign up in in my normal way with the rigger sign in this bottom right hand corner I hope that's dry made that mistake too many times so that's my normal signature when signing with a brush. And there you have it. Uh, Sweet Surrender, that's the boat, at Moored at Haybridge Basin here on the coast in Essex. Mm -hmm.